Welcome to today's energizing yoga flow. We are going to be focusing on asanas and postures that will strengthen and tone our core as well as our entire body. When you're ready, find a comfortable seated position on your mat. Gently close your eyes and settle into the body. On your next inhale, extend the arms overhead, joining the palms together. Exhale, lower them to heart center. Taking three cleansing breaths. Gradually inhaling through the nostrils. And exhaling. When you're ready, we'll start class on all fours, coming into a tabletop position, facing the short edge of your mat, ensuring that the knees are hip width distance apart, navel is drawn towards the spine, neck is long, lengthening through the tailbone, wrists are in line with shoulders, shoulders are engaged, toes are on top. We're going to come into a tabletop crunch similar to thread the needle although we won't be lowering our shoulder to the mat on our inhale we will float our right arm up towards the sky gazing up and on our exhale we will scoop it under engaging the core again flowing with the breath inhale lift up exhale reach across tighten in the abdominals once more flowing with the breath arm back up and gently place it underneath your shoulder. You might like to take one round of cat and cow to clear it out, neutralize the spine. Grounding down through tabletop, we'll go on the left side. Inhale, float the left arm up. Exhale, scoop the arm under, engaging the core. Inhale, extend. Exhale, Really working on rotating the chest towards the left on the inhale and over and under to the right on the exhale. Lifting the arm up once more and placing the left palm under the left shoulder. Again, you might like to take one round of cat and cow. Once you find yourself in tabletop, we will tuck our right toes under, extend our right leg back, maybe shifting the weight slightly forward and backwards. And when you're ready, floating the right leg up in line with the hips, foot is flexed, toes pointed towards the ground, ensuring that the hips are squared to the mat, the right hip is not externally rotated. Finding that core engagement, protecting the lower back. You might like to extend the left arm here, coming into bird dog, playing around with balance. And we'll come into a bird dog crunch on our exhale, drawing our right knee towards our left elbow and extending, moving with control, finding that resistance as though you're flowing through honey or molasses. Gently guiding yourself back to tabletop position, maybe taking a round of cat and cow and we'll go on the left, tuck the left toes under, extend the left leg back maybe shift the weight forwards and back find that neutral posture and when you're ready float the left leg up leg is engaged hips are squared protecting the lower back maybe tenting up onto the right fingertips extending the arm out in front seeing if you can soften the muscles of the face practicing mindfulness as we transition into our bird dog crunches this time right elbow to left knee. Being mindful of that left arm, are you activating the forearm, the arm, the knuckles, the fingers, the palm, not collapsing into the wrist. From here we will externally rotate our left hip, transferring our weight onto our right leg, our right arm as we come into a side plank and up to a gate pose, extending the arms overhead, exhale, lowering them to heart center, extending the arms out wide, gently gliding the left arm down the left leg as we find a nice side stretch, flowing with the breath. Again, maintaining that awareness of the core. We're not arching the lower back, we're protecting our spine, 
maybe finding a bit of stillness, staying a little longer where it feels good. And from here we'll transition onto our right fingertips, coming into a supported side plank, Vashisasana, extending our left leg. Outer hip is engaged, really feeling this in the gluteus medius, the stabilizing muscles, and of course, working the core to keep our body in line. One more breath, gently lowering the left foot down, pivoting back into a tabletop position, maybe taking one round of cat and cow. On your next inhale, we'll ground down through our left leg and our left arm, pivoting towards the right side, extending our right arm up, coming up into a gate pose, extending the arms overhead, lowering them to heart center. And when you're ready, gliding the right arm down the right leg, finding a side twist, finding a nice stretch. Really working the side body here, finding stability and balance. Maybe staying a little longer, flowing with what works for you today. One more breath and we will transition into Vashisasana side plank on the right. Right leg is in line with the right hip, maybe tenting up onto the left fingertips, gazing up over that right arm, or perhaps looking down at the floor if that's more soothing for your neck. Two more breaths. And gently lowering the right leg down, coming back into tabletop position and again taking one round of cat and cow. Tucking the back toes under, walking the fingertips out a few inches, shifting the hips up, coming into our first downward facing dog. Taking a moment to find a position that's conducive with your body today. Maybe that is bending the knees considerably, particularly if you have tight hamstrings. Maybe finding some dynamic movement in your dog, swaying the hips from side to side. One more breath. On your next inhale, float your heels up off the floor, extending your right leg up, coming into a three-legged dog, externally rotating the right hip, flexing the knee, drawing the right heel towards the glute, extending the leg, shifting your weight forward, drawing your knee towards your chest, and exhale, extending back into a three-legged dog. Flowing with the breath, this time we'll bring our right knee towards our left elbow. Exhale, extend. Again, shifting the weight forward, this time coming towards the right elbow. Exhale back to three-legged dog. And on our next inhale, we are going to keep our knee forward as we make some box shapes, moving from one wrist to one elbow, across to the other elbow and wrist. Really working on keeping that lower abdomen engaged, firing up the core here, finding stillness, finding stability. And exhale back to three-legged dog. We'll gently float our right leg forward between our hands, pivoting our back leg out in a 45 degree angle, coming into Warrior One, Virabhadrasana One. Floating the arms down to frame the front foot, stepping back into three-legged dog and lowering the legs. Take a few breaths here, finding a nice release along the hamstrings, the back, Floating the heels up, this time we'll extend our left leg into three-legged dog, externally rotating the left hip, flexing the knee, drawing the heel towards the glute, re-extending into three-legged dog, squaring off the hips and gently with control drawing that left knee towards the chest, exhale back to three-legged dog, inhale draw the left knee towards the right elbow, exhale three-legged dog, inhale left knee to left elbow, and extend. On our next inhale, we'll draw our knee towards the front, coming into our box-like transitions. Elbow to wrist, wrist to elbow and across, finding that core engagement. Working on the balance. Exhale, extend the left leg, gently floating the left leg forward, planting it down between your two hands, Coming into Virbhadrasana 1 on the left side, finding stillness. One more breath. 
and floating the arms down to frame the front foot, stepping the left leg back into three-legged dog and to downward facing dog, shifting the weight forward, coming into a high plank, ensuring that we're lengthening out through the crown of the head, through the heels, the legs, the hips are engaged, the core is on, shoulders are rolled back, Arms are engaged, triceps are rolled back, biceps are rolled forward. Fingertips, palms are maintaining an even distribution of weight and will gently lower down towards the ground, keeping the arms hugging the side body, slowly hovering above the ground, one more breath, and untucking the toes, pressing up into cobra, broadening across the chest, the collarbones, maybe gazing over both shoulders to ensure that the legs are extended back and they're not out to one side exhale lower inhale again press up into cobra exhale lower once more Gently lowering back to the mat, or press up and transition into child's pose. Maybe widening the knees, allowing the belly to sink towards the mat, resting the forehead on the mat. You might like to keep the arms extended here or lower them by your sides, palms facing up. Just taking a moment to reconnect with the body, letting go of any tension, any thoughts that may be arising. You can hang out in child's pose for as long as you like or join us in a tabletop hover, tucking the toes under, gently floating the knees up one or two inches, really working on finding that core awareness here, lengthening across the spine while engaging those abdominal muscles. This is a small movement, but it requires a lot of stability. We are going to extend that left leg back, keeping the foot flexed, keeping the hips in line. We're not lifting the bum up. We're not sagging into the lower back and gently bringing that leg back down, keeping the hover, extending that right leg back, keeping that leg engaged, hips are squared, core is on, arms are supporting your weight. Relaxing the muscles of the face and pressing back into downward facing dog. You might shift the feet back a little bit. Find a position that's conducive with your comfort. Allow yourself to relax. Inhale, float the right leg up. Externally rotate the right hip. Gently come up into warrior one. and transitioning into warrior two, pivoting towards the left side of your mat, maybe gazing in front of the right fingertips. And we will lower our right forearm onto our right thigh as we come into a supported extended side angle, maybe floating the right arm up to meet it. Really deep core muscles engaged here, working on creating a slight pelvic tuck Back to warrior two, frame the front foot, step back into plank pose. Maybe find a chaturanga or we'll meet in downward facing dog. We're going on the left side, floating the heels up, extending the left leg, externally rotating the hip, coming forward into warrior one, floating the arms overhead, squaring the hip. One more breath pivoting towards the right side of the room, coming into warrior two, taking a moment to find a comfortable position. You might be walking those legs in or out slightly. Spine is lengthened, arms are activated. And shifting the torso forward as we lower our left arm onto our left thigh, coming into a supported extended side angle. Maybe staying here, or if you'd like the challenge, float the left arm up. Really working on finding length across both side bodies, 
we're not collapsing into the left side here or into the right we're maintaining that core activation transitioning into warrior two for a moment cartwheeling the arms forward and pressing back into plank pose maybe flowing through chaturanga and we will meet back in downward facing dog one breath here floating the heels up extending the right leg externally rotating the hip gently bringing the right leg forward again coming up into warrior one exhale transition to warrior two blowing with the breath transitioning into either supported or extended side angle warrior two frame the front foot plank chaturanga and back to downward facing dog float the legs up extend the left leg three-legged dog warrior one inhale exhale warrior two inhale supported extended side angle exhale back to warrior two cartwheel the arms forward step back into plank pose shift the weight forward maybe find chaturanga exhale push back into downward facing dog one breath in downward dog and we'll slowly begin to walk our heels towards the front of our mat coming into a forward fold maybe finding ragdoll grabbing opposite elbow maybe grabbing behind the heels the calves bringing the hips in line with the ankles or you might like to find a bind and interlace the fingers overhead bending at the knees stretching along the back the shoulders allowing the neck to hang heavy maybe swaying the hips from side to side one more breath and gently place the palms down either side of the feet we'll widen our stance coming into malasana yogi squat you might like to stay here or extend your right arm out on a diagonal extend your left arm skywards maybe gazing over those left fingertips right tricep is pressing towards the right thigh back to center and we'll go on the left side extending the arms out like bird wings perhaps gazing up over those right fingertips exhale back to center once more maybe finding a bind interlacing the fingers behind the back behind the leg keeping the jaw soft relaxing the muscles of the neck exhale back to center and once more on the other side extending the arms out or maybe finding a bind we may notice subtle or significant differences between postures on one side compared to the other but it is important to give it a go and just embrace the uncertainty and work through it from here we'll transition onto our sits bones ensuring that there's enough space on the mat behind you we are going to come into a variation of navasana boat pose heels and soles of the feet are on the ground lengthening through the spine shoulders are rolled back core is engaged this might be enough for you or perhaps you might like to lower your arms down onto the floor palms underneath your shoulders maybe practicing floating one leg up at a time seeing how that feels or you might like to grab the underside of your legs float both legs up toes are pointed shins are in line with the knees maybe lowering the hands to the floor if you'd like more of a challenge extending the arms out on either side of the legs keeping the neck long Breathing through any tension, relaxing the muscles, relaxing the fingers, the shoulders. With control, we will slowly lower down towards the mat, keeping the core engaged, legs extended. One more breath and gently lowering down to the mat. From here we will flex the knees, bending our feet, bringing our heels towards our sits bones, ensuring that the lower back stays grounded to the surface beneath you. We'll float one leg up at a time, 
shins are in line with knees and we will float one leg down at a time flowing with the breath inhale gently lowering the toes to the floor and bringing them back to center ensuring that the knees are in line with the hips ribs are soft knitted we're not puffing up our chest maybe using your hands your palms as a support a reminder to stay grounded once more and on our next inhale we will float both legs down at the same time gently tapping the toes on the mat this is a great posture to practice if you have a curved spine if you experience hyperlordosis or any lower back pain it really works to strengthen the lower abdominals which work simultaneously with the rest of our body to protect our spine particularly the lower back region a few more maintaining that awareness of the breath gently lowering our heels towards the floor for this next posture, you might like to place your hands underneath your sacral region of your spine, perhaps underneath your bum cheeks. We will extend both legs skywards, engaging the legs and keeping our left leg extended, we will gently float our right leg down, swapping and going on the other side. If this move seems too much, you don't have to lower the heel down all the way. You might lower it to a 45 degree angle, perhaps finding a considerable bend in both knees. Just ensuring that that lower back maintains contact with the ground, the lower abdomen is engaged, you're drawing the abdomen towards the spine and the ribs are soft, the chest is not puffing up. Checking in with the rest of the body, how is the breath? Can you relax the muscles of the face? Bringing both legs up above the hips and we're going to slowly lower our legs together, inching them down towards the mat, hovering just for a moment and slowly with control bringing them back up and relax, drawing the knees towards the chest, maybe drawing the chin towards the chest as well, planting both soles beneath the sits bones, we'll press up into a bridge pose. Working on lifting that pelvis up, broadening across the chest, finding a nice heart opener. Exhale, lowering back down. Maybe bending the elbows, keeping the arms extended. As you lift up, exhale, lower down. And again, pressing up into a bridge. We'll stay here for a moment, working on squeezing those inner thighs together. Exhale, lowering down maybe drawing the knees towards the chest, finding some organic movement here. You might like to roll the knees out one way and the other. Just being mindful to keep the lower back in contact with the surface beneath you. And from here we'll come into wind relieving posture, drawing the right knee towards the right armpit, left leg extended, grounding down through the heel, maybe rolling the right ankle out one way and the other coming into wind relieving posture on the left left knee to left armpit maybe finding circles with the left ankle being mindful to maintain activation in the right leg quadricep is engaged we're protecting the muscles and ligaments around our knee once more drawing the knees towards the chest and coming into shavasana corpse pose for our final relaxation Extending the legs, arms out by your sides, palms facing up. Maybe noticing a natural curl of the fingers. Allowing the body to soften. Allowing the breath to return to its natural rhythm. Not trying to control anything. Just observing. Simply embodying the present moment. 
I invite you to pause the class here and stay in Shavasana for 5-10 minutes if you have it. Otherwise, you might like to invite some small movements, maybe rolling the neck from side to side, releasing any tension from the back of the neck, perhaps extending the arms out overhead, stretching the body in either direction, and when you're ready, we'll bend the knees and roll onto one side, perhaps using the arm as support, a pillow. And from fetal position, we will slowly work our way up to a seated position, keeping the eyes closed if you like, grounding down through both sits bones, rolling the shoulders back, extending the arms overhead, exhale, lowering the hands to the third eye center. We'll take three cleansing breaths to close practice, in through the nose and exhaling. so much for joining this core series yoga flow i am so grateful namaste